What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are breaking down week 18 of fantasy hockey. And what that means is we're going to be looking at the teams with the best and worst schedules and also the streamers to help you maximize your games. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so I just made a new must add video, so I don't have a lot of players on this list, but there are a few developments since I made that video and also some players that I forgot to include. So just to break this down, guys, Arturi Lekkanen, he was on my video or he was in my video, my last must add video, but recently he was just moved up to the first line with Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen. He's also on the first line power play as well. So big stuff for Arturi Lekkanen. This is great for his fantasy value. Add him before it's too late. Next, we got Juraj Slavkovsky of the Montreal Canadiens. I talked about this guy already, but he just scored again today as I'm recording this. He is on absolute fire. His deployment is great and will be great for the rest of the year. So if you are in a league like 12 teams or more, you need to pick him up. Next, we got Kyle Palmieri. Didn't talk about him in my last video, but he's been playing great the last month or so. He's been taking a lot of shots, which I've really noticed. Like some games, he's having upwards of eight shots. Really impressive stuff from him. His ice time still isn't the best, but he's on the first line power play and uh, he definitely could be a very viable option in a lot of leagues. So if he is available, please take a look at him. Next, we got Barrett Hayden of the Arizona Coyotes. This guy is an amazing stream for this week because the Coyotes have four games and four off nights. But not only for this week, I also think that he's really good for the rest of the season. He is back. He's healthy now. He's playing on a line with Logan Cooley and Dylan Gunther, and obviously he didn't get a lot of minutes his first game, but I expect him to get back to being on the first line with Nick Schmaltz and Clayton Keller, and he's also on the first line power play. So I think Barrett Hayden is a great player, and I think that he will start to produce very soon. Next, we got a new guy that I haven't really talked about, Alex Newhook of the Montreal Canadiens. He just returned from injury a couple of days ago, and guess what? He's going to be on the first line power play with Sean Monaghan gone, so... This guy could actually be pretty viable in fantasy. I think in any leagues with 12 teams or more, he should be looked at. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens with Newhook, but definitely promising stuff. Next, we got Jamie Drysdale. Igor Zimula has been scratched. Tortorella seems to not like his game over the last week or so. So Jamie Drysdale is currently on the first line power play. I don't love Drysdale's minutes. They aren't the greatest, but... If he is on this first line power play, maybe he could produce a little bit better. Lastly, we got Victor Arvidsson of the Los Angeles Kings. I told you this guy was returning soon, and yesterday he just practiced in a regular jersey, so he should be back within the next week or so. Definitely a guy you want to keep an eye on. He was great last year. He's been great in fantasy over the last couple of seasons, so make sure you take a look at him. Also, guys, make sure you follow me on Twitter at, at FiredUpFantasy. I'm almost at 1,000 followers, so it would be great to get there in the next couple of weeks. Make sure you give me a follow. I post a lot of content on there. Moving on, we have the teams of the most games slash off nights. This week, there's only a couple of options. There's a lot of teams that only play three games. However, these teams here have great schedules. The number one team is undoubtedly the Arizona Coyotes. They are one of three teams that have four games this week. But with the Coyotes, all of them are off nights. The players on the Coyotes are going to be great for streaming, so make sure you take a look at them on your waiver wire. Next up, we got a couple more interesting options, but before I tell you this, I want to say head on over to Drafters Fantasy Sports and use promo code FIREDUP. You get 100% match deposit up to $100 with a minimum deposit of $20. So $20 gets you $40, $100 gets you $200. The Super Bowl is tomorrow, so if you want to do the player props in there, they are a lot of fun. It's available in Ontario. And uh, yeah, you guys can do parlays on there. It's one of the only daily fantasy sports apps available in Ontario. So make sure you use promo code Fired Up. It's the best promo out there. Moving down this list, there's definitely a tier break. No other teams on this list have more than two off nights. So uh, yeah, Coyotes are the best, like I said. But we have the Los Angeles Kings and the Devils both having four games and one off night. And like I've said in previous videos, it just depends on your roster. Um, when it comes to off nights, right? There is a potential that you could have an open roster spot on a Tuesday or a Thursday. So make sure you check your schedule. That's it for the teams of four games. We have three more teams that have decent schedules as well in terms of off nights. We have the Rangers, the Minnesota Wild, and the Pittsburgh Penguins having three games and two off nights. So that's pretty good for maximizing your games as well. Next up, we have the teams with the least amount of games. There are five teams that only play twice this week. We have the New York Islanders with a terrible opponent goals against average, along with a bad maximized game schedule. Then we have the Vegas Golden Knights, the Winnipeg Jets, the Washington Capitals, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. Moving on, we have the teams with the easiest opponent record. We have the Ottawa Senators with a .363 opponent record. This is pretty elite, guys. I don't tend to see, you know, opponent records this low. So, uh, you know, hopefully the Senators players can capitalize on this. 
we have the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Vancouver Canucks, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. With that being said, goalies that could be available on this list, Jonas Corposalo could be a very good option, and also Ilya Samsonov. Next up, we have the teams of the hardest opponent records. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Detroit Red Wings, the Carolina Hurricanes, the Edmonton Oilers, and the Dallas Stars. Next, we got the teams of the highest opponent goals against average. So these teams are playing teams that let in a lot of goals. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Ottawa Senators, the Anaheim Ducks, the Washington Capitals, and the Calgary Flames. The players on these teams could score a lot of goals this week, so make sure you check them out. Then finally, before we get into the streamers, we have the teams with the lowest opponent goals against average. These teams are playing teams that generally don't let in a lot of goals, so the players on these teams could underperform. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Newark Islanders, the Detroit Red Wings, the Buffalo Sabres, and the New Jersey Devils. Now is the part of the video where I give you guys the streamers to help you maximize your games. Like I told you, the Arizona Coyotes have the best schedule this week in terms of maximizing your games, so these players are going to be fantastic options. We have Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz, Sean Dursey, all on the first line power play, all very good options. Then we got Lawson Krause, not on the first line power play, but he puts up amazing peripherals, so he could be pretty good. We got Barrett Hayden. He's on the fourth line right now with Logan Cooley and Dylan Gunther. Subject to change. I'm expecting him to move up to the first line very soon, but he's on the first line power play, so pretty good option. Then we got Matias Michelli, pretty underrated, pretty consistent. Nick Bugstad playing really good this year. Dylan Gunther on the first line power play, and then Logan Cooley. Next up, we have the players on teams that have four games and one off night. These are players from the Los Angeles Kings and the New Jersey Devils. We have some good options here if they are available. They are Adrian Kempe, Kevin Fiala, Ante Kopitar, all in the first line power play. Trevor Moore, Drew Doughty, Quinton Byfield on the first line power play. Then we got Philip Deneau, Matt Roy, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Mikey Anderson, and in terms of the goalies, David Riddich and Cam Talbot. David Riddich, he's gotten like four starts in a row, so he could be a pretty good option this week. Then for the Devils, we have Nico Heischer, Tyler Toffoli, Timo Meyer, Luke Hughes. As you guys can see, Heischer, Toffoli, and Hughes being on the first line power play. Alongside Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt. They're not on this list, obviously, because there's no way you can stream those guys. And then we got Dawson Mercer, Andre Palat, Eric Halla, Alexander Holtz, and Simon Nemich. In terms of the goalies, we have Vanacek and Nico Dawes. Vanacek's gotten a lot of starts in a row, but he had a really bad game last game, so they might go back to Dawes. We'll have to see what happens. Finally, in terms of the players on teams with three games and two off nights, I don't have a comprehensive list made because realistically, you want to stream players from the Coyotes, the Devils, and the Kings. I will say there's two underrated options that I like. Brian Rust, first line, first line power play. He's getting 20 minutes a game. His roster percentage on Yahoo is like 45%. It makes no sense. And then Alexis Lafreniere. With Lafreniere, he's getting a lot of minutes. I know he's not on the first line power play, but the minutes are good. And he's taking a lot of shots. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. So uh, yeah, definitely an underrated option. If good players from the Devils, Kings, or the Coyotes are not available, then make sure you take a look at the players on the Rangers, the Wild, or the Penguins for this week. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will catch you in the next one.